let's say you are given an array. I will make a diagram. Where should I make it? Like I will give an example on the next page. So let me make, it, make the diagram here. So you will be given a diagram. It is, let's assume it is an array and you have a lot of elements in there. I'm not making the boxes. You just assume it. Now, there are multiple ways to choose which will be the pivot element. And if you don't know what is the pivot element, let's assume that the pivot element is the last element of the array. Let's just assume that. Okay. So let's say the pivot element is P. Now, whichever element is less than P should fall on one side and whichever element are greater than equals to P should fall on the other side. So we will do a parsing over the entire array. Like if this is not making sense, don't worry. We will see an example after this. So like, let's say we have an array of six items or maybe 10 items. So the 10th item will be our pivot element. I will, and I will parse through the first item to the ninth item. And I will keep finding is the, is the current item less than P or greater than equals to P. So if it is less than P, I will throw it in one box. And if it is greater than equals to P, assume that I'm throwing it in another box, right? That you can imagine. So let's say the first box is like this, where you have the element less than P. And the second box is growing like this, where you have an element, where you have a bunch of element greater than equals to P. Okay. These are all arrays, the same array. Now I'm using a parser, the J parser, let's say the J parser which is seeing the next element, which needs to be compared with the pivot element. The jth element needs to be compared with the pivot element. So let's say this shaded region is the jth element. This entire thing is the unseen region. And hence I can say that this is the unsorted region or the unseen region. Even though all these bunch of elements are less than P, they are, they may or may not be in order. I'm not saying that they are ordered, right? So this region is saying less than P greater than equals to P. And this is the J region. Now for each region to, to be intact, there has to be a pointer. Like let's say there are, there is an I pointer here, which is actually pointing to the boundary element of the, of the region less than P. And J will always be the next, uh, I mean the first unseen element in the, in the, in the unseen region. So how many regions do we have? We have four regions. The first region is less than P. Second region is greater than equals to P. The third region is unseen. And the fourth is a pivot element. Now let's assume that the jth element just turned out to be a value X. The jth element here turned out to be value X. And let's say X has to be an element. Like let's assume that X is less than P then I will have to throw, the, uh, throw this item into the first box, right? Okay. Yes. yes. Now the first box do not have any space. So one solution for this would, would be to shift all the items by one place, make a space of one item just at I plus one and throw it there. That is one solution, right? But that is a very costly solution. That is order of N solution for one swap, for one, one throw of an element, right? Isn't it? We don't want to do that. What we do is, I know that it has to stick to I plus one, but then the I plus one -th element definitely guaranteed to be greater than equals to P, isn't it? Yes. So let's swap this I plus one -th element to J. So increment I to I plus one, swap this element. Let's say this element would have been Y. If you swap this element, this Y will come here and this X will come here. And so this region will grow by one, pla one place, right? The region for less than P will grow by one place. And automatically you will see that the region greater than equals P will also grow by one place to the right. Because if you throw something from this region, you are throwing from this uh, greater than equals P region, right? The first element. Yes. And if you throw it just adjacent to it, it, this region is like shifting to the right. So now simply go to J plus one and, uh, and uh, keep on comparing. This is one case for if X is less than P. So 
So let's say that I have another case of x greater than equals to p, then what happens? So if x is greater than equals to p, you don't need to do anything. You just okay. skip to the next item and this region will definitely increase, right? You just skip to the next item and it will keep on appending to the second region. So there can be no more than two cases, you know that, right? Either it will be less than p or greater than equals to p. There is no other case. We have covered both the cases. Now let's say the entire parsing is done and you have reached to the pivot element. So you will break out. And now you know where the pivot element has to be placed. This entire region now belongs to greater than equals to p. And this region belongs to the uh, less than p. Now p has to come in between these two regions. So that you can say that if I have a pivot element, I will place all the elements less than the pivot element on the left side and all the elements greater than equals to pivot element on the right side. Okay. Right. So you use the same technique. You swap I, yes. I plus one eth item. Let's say this was item Z. You swap it with P. So uh, P will come here and Z will come here. And definitely Z is from this second region. So this, this makes sense that you append it to the second region. Only. And so this region remains as it is. The P word stays here. And you have all the elements greater than equals P on the right side. All the elements less than P on the left side. So you are not exactly sorting this entire array. But what you are doing is the idea is you pick a pivot element. You, you have the choice of picking it as any element. But for simplicity, I will pick the last element as pivot. And once you have done that, you have to place the pivot element at its correct position in such a way that the left side pool of elements are all less than this element and the right side pool of elements are all greater than equals to the given pivot element, right? But the pool doesn't take care of ordering. It is like a set of pool. It doesn't take care of ordering. So if I say that my pivot element was 8 and the left hand side uh, elements are 7, 1, 2 and the right hand side elements are let's say 12, 10 and uh, maybe 13. So it is fine. This pool, all the elements in this pool should be less than 8. All the elements in this pool should be greater than or equals to 8. So this seems to be fine, right? Yes. So this is the logic. You have to pick a pivot element. You have to place it at its correct position. And how you place it, I have given a high level overview of that. Let's parse through an example and see how it works. So I take the same example, 5142.83. You have the given array now. What will be the pivot element? Three. Okay, so I had three variables, i, j, and pivot. i, j, and p. So i will be initially initialized here because there are no elements in the in, in that region, the first region, less than p, right? And uh, I have assumed that i will always be pointing to the last element of the first region. But the first region itself doesn't exist. This region is not present, right? J is actually the parser, which will be pointing to the next element of the second region. So there is no second region. So J will be pointing here. Right? Clear? And this is your pivot element. So shall we move on? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. So uh, let's see. Let's compare this J with P. What is the value? It is greater than greater than equals to P, right? So what should we do? We just move forward. Yeah, we just move forward. This is less than P. Yes. It so has to fall on to the I plus one th index and swap with the with the given value. So we will we will do I equals I plus one. We swap these elements. One will come here, five will come here, right? Yes. And since I know that I had swapped it with the previous element, this must have been from region two. So there is no point in staying here and comparing again. Just move on to the next element, right? So this is my I value to be exact. And this is my J value. Now go to J plus plus. I mean the next item. Greater. So skip it. Less. Again do I to I plus plus. So I plus one. This will go here to the swap. So this will be two and this will be five. Yeah. Yeah. And then again, go to the next item, right? So this will be your J and this is your I. So in this case, this is larger. So again, go. And you, if you go, you reach to the pivot element, right? So you stop here. You don't need to do anything. 
where will P be placed? It will be swapped with the I plus oneth element. So this will be three and this will be four. So after doing this one pass, you will see that you will have one, two, three. Three was the pivot element. And then you will have eight. five, eight, eight. four. Or you see that they are not exactly ordered, but it is the correct position of three. I had picked three as the pivot element and I had asked you to place it at its correct position and it is at its correct position. It is creating two pool of items, less than three on one side and greater than equals three on the other side, right? Now you have to recursively solve for both the parts in the exactly, exactly same way. So let's do that for one, two. Two is the pivot element. I is here and J is here. Now this is less. So do I plus plus and swap I with the Jth element, which is exactly the same. So we don't, we don't do anything. When J reaches to P, it's done. So this is the, I mean, wherever the pivot was, it, it was already at its correct place. So when I divided it into two sub problems, the right sub problem doesn't have anything. The left sub problem has only exactly one item. And this is, this is a base case that you have only one item in the array that is already sorted. So you don't need to do anything. You go back. Now go to the other side of the call and let's take 584. If you take this as the pivot element, you will have this as I, this will have J. You compare this J with uh, this P, this is larger. So move on. And this is also larger, right? So move on. Now you are at the pivot element. So where this, uh, where will this pivot element go? It will go swap it with the I plus one at index. So this will be four and this will be five. So this will, uh, will be like this. And this will be your, uh, I mean, what do I say? Your array. Now left sub problem is of zero size. Right sub problem is eight and five. You pick this as the pivot element. This will be I and this will be J. J is larger, move J to the next position. And then again, uh, you have reached to the pivot element. So don't do anything. Swap five with the I plus one th element. So this will be five, this will be eight. And you have already placed five at its correct position. Left sub problem will have no element. Right sub problem will have only eight. It is only a single element. So don't do anything. If you keep moving back in recursion, you will see that you have five, eight on one side, you have four on the other side. So when you reach here, it is four, five, eight. And from here you have one, two. And when you again go back, you are always leaving out the pivot element. So when you join them together, it will be one, two, three, four, five, eight. So this is sorted, right? Okay. Yes. I would like to announce about our DSA live training program, which will guarantee understanding of every programming concept. It makes you interview ready in just three months and it will maximize your offers so that you get the best possible pay and in the best possible company you can. All the sessions will be live interactive sessions. So you will get the feel of a live class and you can ask all your doubts throughout the class. In order to get more details, please WhatsApp us on this given number. So uh, since this is sorted now, uh, let's see what the best case and worst case time, right? So uh, in, in the worst case, first let's discuss about the worst case. Let's say that I have an array, one, two, three, four, uh, five, and I asked you to sort it in uh, ascending order. So I pick the pivot element all the time, right? I pick the pivot element all the time as the last element. If you pick this up, there will be no change in ordering. And so the next time, the next sub problem will have one, two, three, four, right? Sub problem will be empty. Again, you pick this as pivot element. Again, the next sub problem will have one, two, three. Again, if you pick this as pivot element, next sub problem will have one, two. And, and if you pick this up, then, then it will, you will only have one, right? So definitely N square. Yes. Because you have to pass through all the elements all the time. So, you know, one plus two plus three and so on till n minus one will be an n square order. This is the worst case scenario that the, that the array is sorted in, in the order in which it was asked to do. Right. So if you, so just think about it, like, let's say if you know that the nature of your data is in such a way that many times you will be a significant number of uh, inputs will already be sorted. 
So in that case, you would not use uh, this technique of quick sort, but rather you will try to use bubble sort technique, which will give you order of n in that case if it is sorted, right? Yes. Provided you have implemented this version of the quick sort, there are other versions as well. This is the simplest one, which is required for your interview. If you have implemented this correctly in code handling all the scenarios, which you should do as homework, then the next thing which which uh, which they will ask as a follow up question is how how do you improve this? But before looking at that, what will be the best case scenario? The best case scenario would be something Pure like is middle. five one two three. Yeah. So and that will be like a binary partition. So let's say one two. I mean, I'm not giving any any array, but let's say you are you are given an array and a pivot element, and the pivot happened to be placed in the middle in such a way that the n size problem became n by two size and n by two size, right? And again, you happen to get n by four size and n by four size and so on for everyone until you reach to a sub problem of size one. So we already know if this is the structure, then this will be n log n, right? We know that, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is for the simple quick sort, uh, I mean, implementation. Now, if you think about uh, not very simple one, but let's say that uh, the, the interviewer may ask you how to optimize this further. So in order to optimize this, we will not take the pivot element as the last element, but we will use a random function, rand of mod of high minus low plus one. So this will produce uh, an index, like let's say low plus random function of mod of high minus low plus one. So this will give you an index in the range of low and high and you pick that particular element as the pivot element now even though your array is already sorted the pivot might have been picked like this you have to skip the pivot element and pass through all the other elements right so if you do it like that then it will normalize your uh, worst case and best case it will not take the benefit of best case but it will also avoid the worst case scenarios most of the times if you do a random function. So that is an optimization. Another further optimization is why are we doing binary partition? Maybe if we, you, if we do three uh, three way partitioning, then it will not be log n base two, but it will be log n base three, right? If we can do three time uh, three way partitioning and you know that if the base increases, the compressibility of the number of computations will be very less. I mean, it will be very high so that uh, it compresses more, right? Yes. 